Check Podcasts. Hi, I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. This is Chamber Chats, as always, coming to you from the podcasting studios at Czech Television. I will begin by acknowledging that I live and work in the ancestral territories of the Lekwungen-speaking nations, the Songhees and the Esquimalt, and Chamber Chats is made possible by the support of Island Savings at Division of First West Credit Union. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk politics today. We're going to have fun with this. I'm not going to state opinions, but we're going to talk about the whole process. So the title of this podcast is actually... Do you know how to vote? It's, it's much more than just walking into the booth, placing an X and handing the ballot back. We're going to talk about that with a guy who knows all about this. Many, many years of experience in the political world. Uh, Frank Leonard, longtime mayor and councillor in the District of Saanich and also a, a Chamber of Commerce governor, actually. Frank, how are you? I'm great. Good to see you, Bruce. What are you up to these days? I'm working on retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Which can be a Frank, full-time job. Good. Yeah, yeah. I do a bit of consulting and a bit of uh, corporate and public board work, uh, but uh, doing less is, uh, is on the agenda right now. Good for you. Okay, so I'm, I'm not really kidding when I say, do you know how to vote? We're going to talk today, Frank, about what's at stake at all levels of government when you do vote or if you don't vote. But let's have the conversation to begin with. Why should we vote? Why is it important that we do? Well, in my case, I think of my grandfather who fought in First World War. Um, I think of my wife's family in China that don't have the right to vote. In fact, in their schools, they're taught it's best that they don't vote, that you leave the people that know what they're doing in charge. Uh, So we have have something precious here, which is a democracy. People have fought for it. I think we still have to fight for it. I think the fight is something that goes on all the time. So to me, it would be a betrayal not to vote. And uh, that's been part of my upbringing. It's how I'm bringing my kids up. Uh, So on on the very big picture, I, I think it's Democracy should not be taken for granted, and we shouldn't uh, abuse it either by not voting. Yeah, I will always take some time to speak with someone who says, oh, I don't bother to vote. I can't, it doesn't make a difference. I'm not going to make it. Well, yeah, you are, especially young people, like you say, who are the ones that are controlling the future of this world. And if they don't wade in with their opinions through the candidates they choose to vote for, then they can't be responsible for the outcome. Uh, you know, this being a chamber chat, too. Uh, Business has a particular stake in voting, too, whether, on a municipal level, whether it's the area where you live or where you work. But on a municipal level, let's talk about the importance of business being involved in voting. Yeah, I, you know, I, my first election was 1986. I was, uh, had been president or what's called now chair of the chamber in 1985. Uh, I worked hard to get uh, chamber members out to vote who happened to have lived in Saanich. Uh, and a lot of them admitted they had not done it previously. Uh, and uh, I, I think because of, you know, the workplace and the business focus, sometimes the residence is, is not given as high a priority. But it does affect not only, uh, you know, your community and your neighborhood, but it affects the region's economy, who's on your local council. And uh, I always thought that if someone from the business community took the, took the chance to run in local government elections, for goodness sakes, uh, you know, get out and show them some support. There's a lot of people say, well, I just, I don't like the politics of it. I don't, I don't like the process or I don't like the people or whatever it might be. It's, it's so much bigger than that. I mean, you're paying taxes. You need to have input into that, right? Well, and, and the neat thing is at a local level, you have even more impact. Uh, you know, maybe we can get into that a bit more, but the turnout, unfortunately, is quite low. So those who do vote have a much bigger impact than they do perhaps in provincial or federal elections. And of course, you know, in a federal election, we do get concerned, you know, out west that it's over before we even get to vote. Uh, But in uh, a local election, somebody's going to win or lose by less than 100 votes. Uh, I won by less than 100 votes the first time. Uh, It was a squeaker. But uh, in councils that have, say, eight councillors, seven, eight, nine, and 10, that spread of four will probably be less than 100 votes. So your, your vote can really make a difference. Uh, I will state one opinion, that is, if you didn't vote, you don't get to complain. So don't talk to me about something in a process that you didn't participate in. That's just... You know, I never found that was the case with people. (laughs) All right. Yeah. Yeah, really. Uh, So very often people will also say, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why people don't vote. Uh, One is that, uh, well, the person I voted for never gets in anyway, so why should I vote? What's your answer to that? Well, I've I've had that happen to me all the time. Uh, You know, I, uh, uh, I was a provincial liberal in the 70s, so, you know, go figure. Uh, you know, so I've, I've always voted my conscience. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, a, a moderate right of center type politician on Southern Vancouver Island. So quite often the people I vote for don't win. Uh, 
in, you know, including even me when I ran provincially. Uh, but you have to vote your conscience. You have to express your, your opinion and your, your stake. Uh, and uh, even when within my family, my, my vote might get cancelled out. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still want to take the time to, to express that vote. And uh, even in the civic election, since I've left, people I voted for didn't win, and I knew they wouldn't win. Uh, but I wanted, I wanted to express my view that they represented as close as possible to what I believe in. Uh, and uh, I, I, think, I, I think, you know, I, I owe it to myself to do that, to say, this is what I believe in, and these are the people that are closest to it. When you take a look at the totals as well in the election, those who win get the higher number of votes, but the ones who don't get elected still represent a part of the electorate. So those people need to be seen too to say, yeah, I did vote for somebody else. I didn't vote for that person. That stuff matters too. Yeah. And, and quite often in local government, uh, people run more than once. So, you know, if they, if they come in ninth and uh, there was a candidate in Saanich uh, came in ninth and, uh, two elections ago, and and she was close to the top of the polls uh, four years later. Yeah. Uh, so you know the people that supported her stuck with her, and she added to her her, her tally. Uh, so the vote for her, even though she lost in that first try, wasn't wasted. Uh, it was important to and and many. I mean, my my high school buddy Murray Cole uh, lost his first two tries at to Sanders Council and won on the third try. Uh, you know, and never lost again, uh, you know, municipally or provincially. But it was, a, it, it, he was building up support. So I, I think, uh, you know, it, uh, it doesn't concern me if I'm voting for someone that I don't think is going to win. It's more important that, uh, that the people who step forward that are close to what I believe in are given that kind of encouragement. We're going to unpack a whole bunch of this stuff as we go forward. But let's go back to something you mentioned earlier, that the, the turnout in federal elections is pretty high. Provincial yeah. elections, not quite as high. Municipal is very low. Why? Why, Why is that? It's hard to get people out to vote. Uh, you know, uh, they're working hard with uh, advanced polls and mail-in polls. They're coming up with all sorts of ways to try and make it easier for people. Uh, I know as a candidate, uh, you know, we had a, a phone bank uh, getting people out to vote, rides to the polls. Uh, but, you know, Saturday comes along and the kids go to soccer game and they're going out for dinner and Along comes eight o'clock and they haven't voted. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's very hard as a candidate. You want to get your vote out, uh, and uh, they're all going to work to do that. Uh, but it's still discouraging when it's uh, you know twenty percent, twenty four percent in some of the larger centers. Yeah, people who have come to Canada from other countries where they did not have the right to vote. We'll talk to you all day long about how important it is to vote. <laughs> I sure will. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk again about these levels too. So we'll deal with municipal government next. Our guest on Chamber Chats today is Frank Leonard, longtime councillor and mayor in the District of Saanich and one of our Chamber of Commerce governors as well. So the impact of your vote on a municipal level, Frank, when you're voting for one of the multiple candidates running in whatever jurisdiction you, you're living, why is a municipal vote so important? How connected is that to our everyday life? Well, it will affect your neighborhood. There could be something built at the end of your street that you might not uh, care about. Um, it, it, you also, I know people sometimes focus on one issue that means a lot to them, and that's fair game. But in a four-year term, there's going to be issues come up that you can't anticipate. And so the people on council uh, need to exercise some judgment. Maybe they've made some decisions in the past, so you get a sense of what kind of decisions they would make, or stressful situations in the past, so you know how they'll handle stress, um, and 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 look obviously looking for for leadership. Uh, they're competing for your hearts and mind, and and trying to judge how they'll they'll work over the next four years is what you can do when you go to vote, uh, and uh, it, it it will affect ways in which we can't anticipate today. Uh, so we don't know what in 2025, 2026, what the big issue will be at a council table. So, but, but there'll be seven or nine or people who will decide it. And of those nine, maybe five will decide it. And so it's important for you to, to have a vote and try and get the best people there that you think can uh, exercise the kind of judgment that is aligned with what you care about. Yeah, and you talk about housing. When you take a look at municipal as well, whether it's a municipality itself or on up through the CRD, which kind of comes out of municipalities, that's water, 
that's fire, that's policing, that's garbage, that's compost, it's parks, it's trails. Those are close to home things that we all use, and that's why you have to vote close to home for the right person. So, so let's say there's a um, there's a couple of councils here that are nine, uh, eight councillors and one mayor. Um, strategic voting we'll talk about in just a second, but what's the best way to find out who is the candidate that most aligns with what your priorities are? Well, thankfully, there's a lot of information on the websites uh, of the municipalities now. Uh, I, I find, you know, people ask uh, friends and colleagues, you know, do you know who's running in, in X and uh, what do you know? Uh, and I'm getting asked a lot about uh, people in different municipalities because there's a, a lot of new faces, a lot of new names. People don't know about them. Um, maybe they're not a new face and they still don't know about them. Uh, so, so certainly, uh, you know, the website, uh, it will post nonpartisan in information with their biographies and their platforms. Uh, I find, you know, word of mouth through people you know, uh, colleagues, uh, uh, you know, who, who may be involved uh, is a good way of knowing it. Um, probably the worst thing to do is to count the number of lawn signs, uh, right. you know. <laughs> yeah. Particularly if they're on a bu public boulevard, I, I don't think that tells you much about a candidate at all, but it, it does give them name recognition. But uh, just the opposite is uh, I tend to vote, you know, uh, based on, on knowledge and, and a bit of research. The whole signage thing, though, and even advertising that might be taken out, whether it's on social media or regular media, m must have some impact on people's decisions, though. Well, name recognition is huge. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and people don't don't know eight people most often to vote for counselor. Uh, and yet they feel advised to vote for eight people. Uh, and so, you know, there'll be three or four that they know and three or four that they recognize the name. Uh, and, uh, and and so it goes. So the, the lawns, the boulevard signs will do that. A uh, lawn sign, not so much. A lawn sign means that the person living at that household is actually voting for somebody. So I actually think a lawn sign is quite meaningful, but putting, you know, 200 down Blanchard Street on the boulevard uh, it, it is, it's just clutter, but it's, it helps with name recognition. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what people go for. There are also a lot of, again, media sites, whether it's conventional media like Czech or others or uh, uh, social media platforms, will ask the candidates what is their position on a certain issue, and then they'll have like a graph and a chart that shows who believes mm -hmm. in what. So that's where you can kind of go and say, well, I'm really worried about density, or I'm really worried about water quality and find out who aligns with you. And the other thing, too, is that just because you get nine votes, for example, in a minute, you don't have to use them all, right? So let's talk about strategic voting. Yeah, I've rarely uh, used all eight of my votes here in Saanich. Um, I uh, generally vote for the candidates that I feel strongly about. And if, if somebody I don't feel strongly about and I, and I give them a vote, there's a chance they may defeat somebody who I do. Mm. Uh, so, so I, you know, four, five, six uh, votes is, is where I'm at. Actually, for the school board, for years, I've only voted for two. Uh, and, and there's nine spots on the school board. But there's only two trustees who I feel strongly about. And so I, I give them two votes, you know, one each, obviously. Uh, uh, and, and if I were to try and look for name recognition or some, something slight about other candidates, well, what if that person defeated one of my two favorites by one vote? Yeah. Uh, I would have defeated my own candidate. So, so I, I only vote for people that I really have a, a good feeling for, and I don't use uh, all eight votes. I, I, and of course, as a candidate, I, I ran with other candidates and uh, always put together a, a, a package of usually four or five people, and which I encourage those strong supporters of ours to just vote for those on our list. Uh, to this day, I think my mom only voted for me. I, I always, I always try to get my mom to at least vote for a few of my colleagues, but I, I think, I think I'll, I'll never know. I think she's still plumped. <laughs> <laughs> but yet, when you look at the results, though, there very often are candidates for her council who will have this enormous number of votes, even more than what a mayor would get, because those are people that are saying to their supporters, like you say, Frank, well, just vote for me. Don't vote for mm -hmm. anybody else. So that kind of yeah. stuff happens. That's it's simple, but it's strategic. Well, and there were cases when I uh, was reelected mayor and, and, and the number of votes cast for mayor was less than the number of votes cast for council. Mm. And that's because people didn't want to vote for my opponent, but they couldn't bring themselves to vote for me either. <laughs> so they, they abstained on the mayor side of it. I mean, because I was a former provincial uh, candidate, so 
you know, uh, party politics uh, meant that some people just couldn't bring themselves to vote for me, even if my opponent was incredible. Yeah. Uh, so, th- so they wouldn't vote for mayor, and that's fine. That's strategic. But they made sure that they voted for a strong council, uh, strong in, in their sp- perspective. Yeah, I want to come back and talk about that idea of running a slate. But you did bring up one important point, and that was about voting for school district trustees, which really doesn't get a lot of love from people. People don't t- tend to pay attention to that. But, but holy cow, how much money are they managing when you want to get down to budgets, right? Like, talk about that for a second. Well, and it's a, such a thankless uh, job uh, to be on the school board, and yet it's so important. You know, it's the education of our kids and uh, the structure of the schools, where, what, what programs get funded, what, what don't. Uh, whether you had middle schools was a big deal, which schools are open, which ones might be closed. Those are all landed uh, at the school board uh, desk. And, uh, you know, I have a great deal of respect for the trustees and, and the people who work for them, the senior management of the school board. I think they're heroes. Uh, so I always, always make sure I cast uh, ballots for a school board, but I don't, you know, I don't follow it close enough to feel strongly about more than the candidates I vote for. Yeah. Okay. We're going to loop back now. We're going to talk about slates. And for that matter, what's the role of political parties in municipal government? We're going to do that next. Our chamber chat today is with Frank Leonard. He is a longtime councillor and mayor in the district of Saanich, and he is a chamber of commerce, um, uh, governor as well. So Frank, we talked briefly about a slate, which in other words is a number of candidates who share philosophy and ideas. They kind of run themselves together. But what we don't very often see in municipal politics is is actual political parties or movements. Talk about that for a sec, if you would. I think the voters uh, are concerned about political parties. Um, certainly in Vancouver and Surrey, uh, it, they've reached the point they almost need them because the populations are, you know, 400,000, 500,000 people. I think in a, a smaller community, people are uh, resistant to the concept of, of political parties, uh, but they have been more all open to candidates working together. So, uh, which can be a slate or just simply, uh, you know, sharing a brochure. Uh, so Murray Cole and I in 1986, you know, put our brochures together. We get TV ads together. Uh, people were quite shocked. Oh my God! These, you know, these people are are, are running together. You know, uh, but it worked. <laughs> you know, yeah. like we won, and and people who supported Murray voted for Frank, and, and vice versa. So that worked so well that we did it again in '87 and '88. And by the time we got with Murray running for an hour in 1990, now we didn't have one brochure, but we put candidates in an envelope. Uh, in fact, when our tire shop closed at 5:30, all the volunteers would show up at tables and stuff uh, brochures into an envelope and we would share the cost of postage and up the uh, the envelope would, would arrive with a mayor and four people running for council. And, and so that was called a slate. And we always said it wasn't. We just said we were sa- saving postage costs. But we did send a message to our supporters. You know, we can work with each other. We're, we're pretty close on issues. Uh, and then as, as we went further along, I actually just simply did one brochure with everybody's picture in it. Uh, uh, and we didn't have to have the volunteer stuff, 41,000 envelopes. Uh, we even, in our envelope stuffing, we also did it in the city of Victoria. We tag team. We had our volunteers working in Victoria and in, uh, and in Saanich. So we denied it was a slate because politically people seemed to get their nose out of joint about a slate, but essentially it was. Uh, it didn't act as a slate on council. Once we were elected, people voted their conscience. Uh, but we were like-minded, you know, and, and and so, you know, in BC, we like to be right and left. I, I tend to think we we're more moderate to right uh, than anything. Uh, but when Arizona came along, I had no idea how anybody was going to vote. Uh, you know, people voted their conscience. Uh, but I think the voters uh, felt comfort in going, okay, well, I know I know Leonard. And if Leonard is comfortable with these four, well, then that's, that's good to know, because I really don't know them. Uh, and, and that's of some value. So, uh, you do see in Victoria, I, I, they have a quasi party, uh, and so it, it works for them. Uh, you see, CUPE endorse uh, or Labor Council endorses uh, candidates, and that that sometimes works for them. Uh, but I, I think it's addressing a need that the voter doesn't don't know enough people to vote for. They might know one person. So if there's two or three people attached to them, they go, well, okay, I'll, that'll give me four votes at least. 
Yeah, when you talk about the amount of work of stuffing envelopes and putting signs up, it's a breathtaking amount of work to run a candidacy. So you got to be aware of that if you're going to... We did a previous uh, session at the Chamber about, do you know what you're getting into if you're going to run? So that's available on the Chamber website too. But let's talk about after the election, Frank, whether your candidate or, or favorite person got in or not, how can you then get to that person and tell them what you think, that your opinion matters? What, how do you get in front of an elected official? Well, that's... That's a good question. Uh, and, and have it be effective. I mean, yeah. people had no problem getting in front of me. Mm -hmm. It's whether whether I was insulted or whether I was persuaded. Uh, so, I mean, uh, when it came time to crunch, most people said, I voted for you and I want you to do this. Uh, and, uh, you know, I remember uh, uh, there's a poll near Perks Arena, uh, which I never do very well in. Uh, and And I and I only had like eight votes out of 110 votes on the street, but something came up and most people said they voted for me. <laughs> oh. And I knew that, I knew that was technically impossible because yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. only had eight votes in that poll, <laughs> yeah. but you know, they all used in their preamble, Leonard, I voted for you. I need you to do this. So the politicians do filter that kind of a, a preamble. I voted for you, but, but they are persuaded by logic and facts and new information repeating old information, you know, it, it doesn't have an effect uh, most often. Uh, but I was, you know, ears open to new information. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I do help some councils after elections. The toughest thing to figure out once you're elected is when to lead and when to follow. Because sometimes following is a form of leadership. And so, you know, if, if the will of the people is, is over here, and, and, you know, you're the only voice on the other side, you could just simply be arrogant. <laughs> you know, that might not be leadership. That might be arrogance. Yeah. You know, you need to listen to the, to the will of the people if, in fact, uh, that reflects their, their, their views. So th that's something that every politician needs to try and figure out how to balance it. And it, it actually comes with some maturity on council. Uh, the first hundred days on council, you know everything. Uh, it, it takes a little while for you to realize, you know, that might not be my first opinion, but now that I'm getting this input, I, I actually could go over here. And you'll see the veterans be more careful about staking out ground in an election, you know, absolute positions, because they've learned with input, you probably have a better position than you had at the start. It's quite a process, whether it's federal, provincial, or municipal. We do have the right in this country to vote. It's our democratic right. It's how decisions are made. And there are many, many people in the world who wish they had the rights that we do. So please consider getting out and voting at every opportunity you have in whatever election may be coming along. Frank Leonard, thanks for all your years of service and for your time today. We always appreciate it. Been a pleasure, Bruce. Thank you. Frank Leonard, longtime councillor and mayor of the District of Saanich and a governor of our Chamber of Commerce. Thanks again to Czech Television and Island Savings. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you again for another Chamber Chat.